Everyone can see that okay. That's great. Brilliant. So yeah, like Paul says, I'm Daniel from a uh, Centre of Edinburgh Council um, and I'm here just to talk about a pilot project that we ran um, over the end of last year until March um, this year. It was around uh, Edinburgh Community Climate Fund um, and one of the main aims of that process was to pilot a digital tool and, and use console to try and um, learn from it's, it's, it's what works well and how, how we can use that in other PB um, settings within Edinburgh. Um, so I'll just kick off. Um, so I should say that, that this process was uh, quite a traditional kind of grants based process and we followed a model that you would all be very familiar with. Um, so we brought our steering group together to design the process. We had an idea generation stage um, we had a bit of time to develop proposals from those ideas and um, to work with the groups to try and uh, make sure as many applications could go forward to the public vote as possible. Um, we had the public vote then we funded the successful projects and then we're now currently in that kind of monitor and valuation stage where we'll be doing um, an evaluation of the process but then also a kind of uh, outcome report where we'll look to try and um, do some evaluation on the outcomes of the um, what the projects have managed to deliver and um, with, with, within the money and the grant they've got from the process. Um, we, we used for the steering group we used the kind of um, key features or principles within the PB charter to try and uh, reflect on when we went through the process to design it which were really useful to uh, reflect on. Um, so the steering group was made up of colleagues from services within the council, but then also representatives from the community and voluntary sector um, and specifically people who had um, experience of working with, working with PB um, in other areas of the city um, and who had a, an interest in climate change. Um, we did get some support from some external organisations as well. Um, so Gavin um, to help us use the Young Scott platform and um, John and Tom from, from COSLA to help set up um, con, cos, console. Um, so importantly, I think we had a, so since we had a really short time scale for this process, we had a terms of reference and then regular meetings with the steering group just to outline the kind of commitment that we wanted from them and what we were expecting them to do as steering group members. Uh, they help develop our kind of IIA, which is our integrated impact assessment. So to try and understand um, equalities um, impacts and what we would need to do to mitigate that. And then undertook that kind of stakeholder analysis to understand the different groups who may need support to take part or who um, might be more difficult to um, reach using traditional channels. Um, then we designed the communication engagement plan um, and worked with our communication colleagues to build up a bit of a campaign um, really to build momentum up to the vote from the idea generation stage. Uh, the steering group also helped us review material and agreed on communications and um, the criteria from, for the fund and methods to be used. So, so the, the actual criteria um, we, we kind of went in with really light touch criteria and then we worked with the steering group to develop what they thought was important for um, the, the actual goals of the project. Um, so they came up with um, the following objectives which projects would need to meet um, to be eligible to go forward to the public vote and, the, and it was quite broad um, didn't focus on one area of climate change at all and we hoped that that would allow people to be quite um, innovative and kind of allow for creativity within the process. Um, so we wanted people to be able to put projects forward that would create opportunities for community leadership and learning on climate change, um, reduce greenhouse gas emissions with communities and contribute to the net zero goals for Edinburgh, um, generate sustainable projects for the benefit of local people to build resilience or adapt to climate change within communities, um, and build relationships between um, neighbourhoods of different socio-economic and ethnic backgrounds, um, work together on just equitable and accessible climate and resilience activities, contributing to the city's net zero agenda, also ensuring that activities work towards reducing or removing barriers 
for disabled people in the transition to net zero. So, so that last one, obviously a bit of a mouthful, but um, very important for um, the work that um, we all do. Um, so to, to go through um, the, the different stages of the process, so that, that first stage was our idea generation um, stage, and that was open to any Edinburgh-based community group or organisation. Um, the steering group decided that only one um, application per group would be allowed. Um, the people could apply for up to £20,000, um, but there was no lower limit. So we didn't want to discourage people who had um, small ideas um, to, to apply to the fund. And we'd asked people to um, be able to deliver the project with one year of funding, um, just so we can um, meet our kind of um, criteria for, for uh, council finances. Um, and there was no requirement to be a formal group. So we thought that was important because we wanted to encourage new partnerships um, and groups to come together and not discourage people who were maybe not formally constituted to um, apply for funding. Um, importantly, on that kind of idea generation stage was that we um, really wanted as many ideas to come forward and we were really not sure how many we would get so it was quite a bit of an unknown um, so so that application process what people had to do to put an idea forward was they had to submit an idea through the console system and then submit a kind of a word um, template form which kind of give a little bit more detail and give some of the administrative details that we needed um, so things like bank accounts um, and things like that. So we knew people would be able to get funded. Um, we had an online guide that detailed um, quite a lot of information about how what would be eligible and what wouldn't be eligible. Um, some um, ideas of what kind of projects could look like, um, and then also kind of frequent asked questions. Um, we, we did then also have drop-in and online information sessions, so we went to a couple of places where people could come in and just have a chat about their idea, um, just to find out if it would be eligible or what, what they might want to think about. And then we had that kind of online information sessions where people could just come in and um, hear about the funds and um, hear about the, the different stages and um, to understand about the application process but then also about the kind of voting stage because um, for lots of the groups who did apply and um, participate budgeting was quite new to them and um, so at the end of that kind of process we got 61 applications totaling um, over £700,000, so we were um, significantly oversubscribed. Uh, we started out with a budget of £100,000, but because of the interest and the amount of applications we got, we were able to um, increase the funding to £140,000. From, from those kind of 61 applications, I think around 57 were eligible. Um, after um, tweaking some of them and going back and working a little bit with the groups to um, make sure they, they fit with the criteria. Um, and the ones who weren't eligible, um, they were either, um, they, they didn't meet some of the kind of core criteria, kind of rules around the fund. So one of them was a business, um, for example, which we didn't allow. Um, and another one wanted to do something on land that they didn't, um, and another one didn't successfully fill out all the paperwork um, properly, even after us trying to help them with that. So just to really touch on some of the, just one of the themes that um, Paul mentioned earlier about deliberation and collaboration. Um, so, so we knew from a mainly online um, process we were keen to explore some of the functionality within console and um, so some of you will know that there's options to use um, different features within it to have online conversations so we did um, encourage people to go on to the ideas people submitted on cons console and look and um, give comments and um, kind of interact with the projects that were coming forward and we weren't really sure how that would go and um, it was a bit of an unknown um, especially online um, but 
what we got was quite positive feedback within that. So we got over 200 comments, I think, um, where people were um, commenting that, um, you know, that's a great idea and um, we should work together um, and things like that. So there was um, limited um, interaction with the, the different projects. And I, th I think what it showed was that there was lots of opportunities for groups to work on similar projects and um, because there was comments and people um, swapping details to, to work together in the future. Um, so there wasn't, th this was a kind of a, a part of the process that it wasn't separated out, but it was something that we included in the call to action when people were voting to encourage them to um, go on and try and um, give some feedback and have those conversations. So the public vote um, was uh, online and supportive community voting and it was quite a small voting window so from the 3rd to the 12th of March and um, it was open to all Edinburgh residents um, and we asked voters to choose five projects and that was really to ensure that there wasn't a um, bias for groups who have large membership bases. Um, so one of the things that we were conscious of that there were some groups who applied who would have had huge membership bases. So people like Hibs um, Foundation and Dynamic Earth, who if they had um, campaigned strongly to their kind of membership, then they would get quite a lot of support. Um, in the end, that didn't happen, um, which was quite interesting. Um, and then obviously the projects with the, the most votes um, were awarded grant until the funds exhausted. So, so the the vote um, kind of took place um, on console and then also we used the Young Scott platform to try and engage young people um, and then we also um, had community voting through all of our um, public and school libraries where people could vote there as well. Um, and what we wanted to do through that was um, provide opportunity for people to get support to use the online voting system in the first instance. But if they weren't able to do that or didn't want to you do that, then they were able to um, request a paper ballot form. Um, we also supplied um, paper ballot forms to a number of groups who um, requested um, those because of specific needs of some of their service users um, and the um, challenges around accessing online material. Um, so in the end we ended up with um, 2,510 participants, the majority of them used console, um, 346 of them were paper ballots and 50 were through Young Scott, um, which shows that the the need for, for for those paper ballots but then also um there's some learning that we'll probably try and um improve on in the future um because there's definitely opportunity to uh, use young scott um better but maybe had some challenges with time scale and some of the communication um with getting out to schools and stuff so some of the promotion we did, um, obviously I mentioned earlier that we didn't necessarily want to um, limit to you know traditional channels. So we used things like lamp post straps outside every every library to encourage people to um, find out about the fund and and the vote, um, and then also give them an opportunity that they could go into the library and vote. Um, we used social media and um, paid promotion through Facebook and um, Twitter and then also Google ads um, as well and we pr provided um, a kind of a pack of material for, for groups to campaign um, through a poster and an email signature um, and then we also did an online session for all groups to um, find out about the process of voting and um, give them a bit of um, help with them understanding how the registration and um, worked so they could um, support their own kind of service users to to vote if needed. Um, so the, the online reach this was really interesting um, for us is that we did get lots of campaigning from different groups and there was loads of um, kind of conversation online especially through social media where groups um, were um, using social media to promote the fund and that was really interesting for us because there was 
um, you know, one of the main aims of this was to try and um, promote the promote climate change and promote the work that groups were doing, and then have that kind of discussion. Uh, and as well, interestingly, there was kind of some. Um, obviously, <laughs> you'll have all read some of the comments on social media sometimes when council posts um, certain things and. Traditionally, it's very negative, um, but through this, we did get some positive kind of comments where people were um, being very positive about the process. So that was um, encouraging um, as well, because that relationship is not always very positive. I was just going to really quickly just show you what console looks like because I've talked about it, but some of you might not have seen it. Just so um, we had a, a console site set up through COSLA and um, the kind of um, set it up to match our um, branding for, for the council and then we embedded it within the Edinburgh Council website so it was um, part of the, the council website which we thought was important for, for trust and people knowing what they were going on to. Um, the, the way the site works is you can set it up with the different stages. Um, so we try to set out um, very simply that we have the idea stage, project review, public vote, and then outcome announced. Um, and then through that, we had um, a series of different guides to tell people what the kind of what is participatory budget and some things about accessibility, um, some things about the fund, key dates. Um, about the application process, FAQs, what makes a good idea, and then application support. Um, and what you end up with uh, through console is that you can have a gallery. Um, so when you're in the kind of public vote stage, um, you're able to go on and see all the ideas that have been submitted. Um, you can search through them um, through different categories and use um, kind of tags and things to use um, so people can intuitively look through the different things. Um, but it is quite intuitive around um, people being able to click and read a little bit about the project um, and then um, see the full application. So we thought that was important through transparency. So you're able to kind of get a snapshot of what the idea wants, um, but then also able to um, see the, the, all the idea. And, and these will stay there um, while the site's live. Um, and what the successful projects are able to do is um, go in and update this page and put in milestones um, and updates about the project. So in a year's time, people can go back onto the site and see, oh, well, actually what's happened because of that project and because of that funding, um, which you know, again, through transparency is quite, quite, um, quite neat. Um, that was probably all you need to look at in the, uh, the um, console. It, it does give you that kind of map as well. And one of the interesting things for this process was um, we probably got quite a good geographical spread of projects. So we got um, applications for every single ward in the council area, apart from one, I think, um, which was um, probably not what we, what we expected at the beginning. So just to go back into this slideshow quickly. Um, so kind of what we're where we are now in the next steps of this process. So we've um, obviously through the process, we were only able to fund a small number of the projects. So what we're keen to do is signpost other funding. Um, so we circulated um, some information on different funds that were available um, to, to all applicants so they can um, find out about the different information. Um, there has been some natural new collaborations, so people coming together and um, to work on joint projects, which um, is actually good as part of the process. So there's groups working um, with one council service to develop kind of a joint lottery bid um, for, for another fund. Um, we have offered to um, speak to and support any groups if, if, if they would be interested to um, work with us. Um, we have had 
um, one to one inception meetings with all the funders groups just to outline kind of expectations and um, what we're hoping for through the funding. Um, we are looking to facilitate a networking event um, and then that's again to kind of try and bring together some of the groups and then have a focused discussion on some of the kind of key themes that came together and um, because there's um, obviously from the applications that came forward there's definitely an opportunity for groups to work together um, and we put in other joint funding bids and um, so we're working with EVOC um, to do that and um, bring in kind of a fundraiser to, to help um, with that and then we're obviously going to do an evaluation um, and that will include steering group member um, applicant and voter questionnaire um, based on the principles in the PB chart and the national standards for community engagement and that's really just for us to learn about different stages of the process and where there's opportunities for us to um, improve in the future.